In Swift Data Part 6, we'll look at relationships in Swift Data and the model macro. Last time we created model classes with Swift Data. In particular, we created the employee class, which contained a badge number, a name, and an array of meetings. This meetings is a relationship to another type, the meeting type. Each meeting had a reason, a time, and an array of attendees, as well as a link to its location. A location had a building and a room, and it also contained an array of meetings. And so as a diagram, we had these three classes, location, meeting, and employee. A location had a to-many relationship with meeting, and in return, meeting had a to-one relationship with location. Each meeting was in a single location. And so we had these different relationships in both directions, and we can connect them by noting that the relationship location has an inverse, which is location's meetings relationship, and that joins them together. Similarly, each meeting had multiple employees involved, and each employee could be going to multiple meetings. That's a many-to-many -many relationship, and again, we can connect those. We have these attendees, which is already a relationship, but we want to connect it to the inverse relationship, and we do that by specifying the inverse relationship as employee.meetings, and you can see we've linked those two together here. That allows a meeting to add an employee, and automatically the Swift data mechanism will make sure that that employee has that meeting added as well. And so in our very simple data model, this is how our three classes are connected. Here's our meeting class, and at the top was this macro, at model, and so let's expand the macro and see all the code that gets added. One thing that gets added is the schema metadata, and you can see here that this looks a lot like our XML. It's got the reason and time, those are two properties, and it's got our two relationships, attendees and location, and even notes the inverse of those two relationships. We also get two conformances, meeting is a Swift data persistent model, and also meeting is an observable. We talked about observable in another series, and that means that things are tracked and it's going to be easy for Swift UI to get notified of updates so it can refresh the UI. The mechanism for that is also added here. It's the observation registrar, and all things will be registered when there's a get or a set for them. In fact, we can see that if we look back at our properties and we notice that at underscore persisted property with each one, those also are macros. And so we can take one of them, for example, the persisted property for reason, and expand that macro. And one thing that's added is a private property that's used for bookkeeping and whatever. And then also, similar to what we saw for observable, there's an init. And also there's a get, which uses the observation registrar when anyone tries to access the property and returns the appropriate value. And the set, which also sends a message to the observation registrar to tell it that someone's trying to change the value. Without even looking at all those at persisted property macros, We've got a lot of code added without me expanding the inner macros. But the only code we type is pretty much the code we would have typed anyway if we were going to implement meeting. I would have probably had it be a struct, not a class. I probably wouldn't have had to include the init, but essentially it's the same code. In fact, the init is really boilerplate. Here's the essential code right here. That's not a lot of code that we've typed for the macro to add quite a bit of functionality to it. So that's the at model macro that Swift Data defines. Next time, we'll connect our UI to the Swift Data stack, and you'll see how easy it is to interact with.